What's up guys and welcome to this lesson on how to multiply fractions. I highly recommend you pause and try the examples when prompted. So let's just jump right into it. So I'm actually just gonna write down what the rule is. So I'm gonna be using a couple of letters um, and so they all stand for real numbers. So let me write down the rule. Okay, so I want you to actually pause the video and look at this for a moment. And I want you to think about how would you describe what's happening in this without using any math language. So I don't want you to use the letters here. I don't, I, I, like I could say this right with all the letters, but just what is actually happening to the letters? How would you summarize that? Well, we'd say that really what we're doing is we are multiplying that beep straight across, right? <laughs> so take a look at this, right? So we're just multiplying straight across. A times C is AC and then B times D is BD. So we just multiply everything straight across. So here's my question. Do we need a common denominator for this? The answer, no. We said nothing about a common denominator. So a lot of times people see fractions and they think, oh my God, I have to have a common denominator. But with multiplying, this is actually pretty straightforward, right? It's just multiply everything across. Don't worry about the denominator, you're good to go. All right, so let's put this into to practice then. So I've got two fifths times three sevenths. So like we said, we're gonna just multiply straight across. And so here's what this would look like. I'm gonna have two times three over five times seven. So that will be six over 35. And there's nothing that we have to reduce in this case. It's just, that's it, we're done, we're good to go. Okay, so what about B? So I've got seven ninths times two fifths. So once again, I just multiplied the top pieces together and I multiply the bottom pieces together like this and I get 14 over 45 and boom, done, we're good to go. Okay, so that's the idea. What I want you to do now is I want you to pause the video and, and try these two on your own, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for C, so it's a still the same thing, right? So just because they have the same denominator doesn't mean anything, we still just multiply everything straight across. So I get 120 over 49. Now, sometimes people ask about, you know, improper fractions. I'm fine with leaving this as is. I talked about in another video how to simplify this if you need to, but for our purposes, this is just fine. Now, for D, it's still the same idea. I'm gonna take one times three times one, so all the stuff on top, and then all the stuff on bottom. So two times five times seven. So one times three times one is just three. And then for this part, two times five is 10. 10 times seven is 70. So I get three over 70 and we're done. Okay, so once again, why don't you pause here and try these two, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for E, this one is, you, you just gotta think about it a little bit before you start. So five can actually be rewritten as what? It can be rewritten as five over one like this. And then everything else just works the same. So five times two is 10. 1 times 3 is 3, 10 thirds, good to go. And I guess if we did want to convert that to a mixed fraction, so you think to yourself, how many times does 3 go into 10? That would be 3 times with the remainder of 1 and then just put that over the denominator again. So the denominator in this case was 3. Okay, so now for f, it's still the same thing too, right? So I'm going to multiply all these together, but I want to rewrite this 2 as really, let's, let's rewrite this as how about 2 over 1 like that. And so, um, let's see, if I multiply this together, two times five is 10, 10 times two is 20, so this is 20. Three times seven is 21, and then that times one, so this is gonna be just 20 over 21, done. Okay, so that's the basic idea. So now I wanna talk about slightly more complicated examples, things that aren't quite so straightforward. So what if I have this situation here? So just pause for a second, look, look at the example, and think about what would happen if we tried to multiply this together. 55 times 45, you're gonna have to get out your fingers and toes, um, you're gonna have to really think through how to work that out. Same with 54 times 77. Those aren't totally straightforward calculations, you have to think about them a little bit more. But wait, there's more. You'll also notice 55 and 77 have something in common, and 54 and 45 have something in common. So the story here is that I can actually reduce all of this before I just start multiplying together. So when that happens, you know, try to take advantage of that and, and make the problem easier on yourself. 
So for 55 and 77, what goes into both of those? 11. So I'm gonna just write a little note here to myself there, dividing both sides by 11. And then what about 54 and 45? What are those divisible by? Well, those are both divisible by nine. Okay, so I've written this out. So I'll, here's kind of the key with this. When you do this division, you have to have one thing on top and one thing on bottom. So you can't have, like if both of these things uh, that were divisible by 11 were in the denominator, you couldn't do this. So you have to have this relationship where one of those factors that you want to divide out is on top and one is on bottom. And it doesn't matter where it's at. They could be on the diagonal or they could be on top of one another. But that's kind of the thing that you're looking for. And we'll see some more examples of this as we go along. Okay, so 55 divided by 11 is 5. 54 divided by 9 is 6. 45 divided by 9 is 5. And 77 divided by 11 is 7. Okay, now this is a much more straightforward calculation than this one, right? I would much rather multiply this together. So now if I keep going with this, this will be 25 over 42. And now we're done. We don't have to simplify any farther. There's nothing else that we can simplify by. So you want to try to do that when possible. So let's take a look at another one of these. So if you want to pause for a second just to think of what you can divide by, go for it. So I want to show you a couple different ways that this, this could kind of shake out, I guess. So let's say that I'm looking at 21 and 35. So I notice those are both divisible by 7. So let's see. I'll write that out. Divisible by, by 7, divisible by 7. And then for the 28 and the 16, so these are both divisible by four, but what happens if you don't do that? I wanna show you. So let's say that what pops out to me is that these are both divisible by two. So if I start to simplify this out, 21 divided by seven is three, 28 divided by two is 14, 16 divided by two is eight, and 35 divided by 7 is 5. Now, notice at this point here, I could actually simplify this again, right? So I could divide the top and bottom here both by 2 one more time. And that's fine if you want to do that. But I want to show you what happens if you just don't notice, because that's a common thing that will happen. So I'm going to take 3 times 8. So that's 24. And then 14 times 5 is 70. Okay, so look at your answer. So this is actually, just by looking at this, you can see now that you you didn't choose kind of the, the largest numbers that would divide into everything, and that's totally fine when that happens. So now just looking at this, I can see the top and bottom are both divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 2, and I'll get 12 over 35, and now I can't divide it any farther, right? So you know, if you notice that you can do another simplification and you want to, go for it. But if you don't, just be careful at the end and make sure that you can't simplify any farther. Like here, I, I could go one step farther. So there's sometimes there's multiple paths to get to the same answer. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Okay, so why don't you pause the video here and try these two and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I noticed between 35 and 49, those are both divisible by seven. And then between 24 and 18, those are both divisible by 6. Now, this is going to give me, let's see, 35 divided by 7 is 5, 24 divided by 6 is 4, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 49 divided by 7 is 7. So I get 15 over 28. Now, if you did not choose these numbers, you may have had to simplify in the final step, but in the end, you should have gotten this answer. So we talked about just, you know, in the last example, multiple ways to get there. So this could be one of those times where maybe that, that happens. Okay, so for 60 here, so there's actually a lot going on in this one. So let's see. Just kind of going through this, it looks like 
60 and 72 are both divisible by 6. And then 56 and 64 are both divisible by 8. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So this is going to give me 10 over 8 times 7 over 12. So now you'll notice a couple of things. And again, there are multiple ways you can approach this. So you might notice that this 10 over 8, you could simplify this by dividing by 2, or you can divide 10 and 12 by 2. It doesn't matter which way you want to go with this. So I'm going to go ahead and just divide 10 and 12 by 2. And so now I get 5 over 8 times 7 over 6, and that I can multiply straight across. So this will be 35 over 48. Okay, so if you did not take this path exactly, once again, however you got there is fine, but you should end up with 35 over 48. Okay, so if you'd like to try two more examples, these are a little bit different again, so you can pause here and then hit play, and these are the last two that I have for this video. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for this first one, what I want to do is I actually want to rewrite 12. Let's rewrite 12 as 12 over 1. I'm a visual person, so I like to have everything kind of lined up like this. Okay, so now as I'm looking through everything, I notice that... 12 and 6, oops, 12 and 6 are both divide, divisible, divisible by 6, so I will divide both of those by 6. And then also I notice that 5 and 10 are both divisible by 5. So I'm going to divide this by 5 and I'm going to divide this by 5. So look at what happens now. I'm left with 2 over 1 times 1 over 1 times 1 over 2. <laughs> So this one's actually a little bit perplexing in some ways. Um, so now notice that, the, so if I multiply everything together, you're really left with what? You're just left with two over two. And what does that equal? That just equals one. Two divided by itself is one. So this one looked like it was gonna end up as something crazy, right? Just turned out to be one. So that can happen. Now, for D here, how do you do multiplication like this? So when you have a mixed number, you always want to convert this to a fraction. That's the first step. So let's do that. Let's call this um, 30 over 75 times. Okay, so I'm going to take 3 times 5 plus 2. So 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2 is 17. So this is going to be 17 over 5. Okay, so now as I look through this, I see that really the only simplification I can make in this case will be the 30 and the 5 are both divisible by 5. So divide this by 5, divide this by 5. So I'm left with 6 over 75 times 17 over 1. Now, before we go on, notice So between 6 and 75, um, I can actually divide these both by 3, right? So you may or may not have noticed that. So um, I just want to go ahead and, and show you the, how this would look. Maybe it looks a, a little goofy. So if I go ahead and do that, I'm left with 2 over 25 times 17 over 1. And now I can multiply that together. So that'll come out to... 34 over 25. And so that's that's it for that one. Now, if you didn't notice this or you didn't feel like you could do this, so one, you can totally do this, um, but then you would have just had to simplify at the end. So no matter what, at some point you end up doing all the simplifications. And so that'll do it for this one, guys. I will catch you in another video. Ta-ta!